All right, guys. We are doing the Guts and Glory webinar, and we got a lot to unpack. This is a big, this is a this is a, this is a big topic, and it influences a ton of stuff. And but it's really important. In fact, I would say next to your brain and your spinal cord, your digestive system, your guts are the most important organ when it comes to your overall well-being, your overall health and vitality. And so we're going to go through a ton of stuff of uh, symptoms that are created by um, digestive issues or an imbalance in your microbiome and really some, some awesome solutions on what we can do to take charge of this and to correct it. But here's the reality is I think that so many people, and I'm saying like probably 80, maybe even like 90% of people have some sort of gut issues and have no idea. In fact, I was one of those people. I uh, did a bunch of gut testing, not because I, any, I had any symptoms. I just did it because I wanted to know. And there was all sorts of eye-opening things that I had no idea I had issues with that um, were creating issues, but I didn't realize that they were even symptoms. And so I, I really have been diving down into understanding the importance of the gut and how to heal the gut and all the things that it can be affecting you. So we're gonna really kind of dive into this. And again, there's a lot of information, so I'm gonna I'm gonna really kind of just jump right into it. There is gonna be an LRQ. We'll put like a link maybe um, in the comments. This is the lifestyle questionnaire. It's designed to help give you a snapshot of really what is going on. And so you answer all these different questions, and it gives you a grade on where your health is. And it, it's. It's a tool to help motivate you to take action because too often we're like, well, no, no, I do, I do pretty good. I'm, I do way better than most people. I, it, <laughs> comparison game can get dangerous, but here's the reality is you never want to neglect your health. Don't, don't overestimate how well you are doing because what you don't want to do is be put these blinders on and not recognize where your health is headed until there's a crisis and then try to do something about it. It's really dangerous when you get to the crisis situation and you're trying to heal because it's easier to prevent than it is to cure. So just remember, so that's going to be a really good tool that you'll be able to do. And we'll put a link in the, uh, uh, we'll put a link in the uh, comments below. But ultimately our mission here with Max Living and DeLong Family Chiropractic is to help empower you into understanding how to take control of your health, to navigate through this, insane world of sickness and disease especially when it comes to treatments because the medical system is so mechanistic they they treat disease they don't treat you they definitely don't work on getting you healthy it's trying to label you it's trying to treat you and it's it's typically it's just drugs and surgery and on you know sometimes that, that is important sometimes that's necessary to treat a symptom however treating symptoms do not get us healthy. And so that is the opposite approach of what we are trying to do. We're trying to get the body so healthy and so strong that disease doesn't exist. So our, our real mission is to help empower you specifically through these webinars and these seminars that we do in the office to help you just take control of you and your family's health to avoid all the sickness and disease that you see going on and running rampant in our culture. So my name is Dr. Brent DeLong. I've been in practice for uh, over a decade. I've been doing these workshops and seminars the entire time in practice, working with Max Living to help empower tens of thousands of patients throughout my career to take charge of their health, come off medications, and even reverse disease processes. So this is the Guts to Glory webinar, and we're going to be specifically talking about your digestive system. So I, I, I really hope this isn't backwards on my video because it, it looks backwards on my screen. But real quick, I'm going to go through the digestive system, really what it entails. So you have three main like um, like solid organs. Uh, you have your liver, your pancreas, and the gallbladder. And so your digestive. So basically, this system, these organs, are what form your digestive system. So esophagus into your stomach, liver, gallbladder. So basically, this is going to track the food process and through and how everything works. I would say the number one thing that people have issues with that they don't recognize is they don't recognize how acidic their stomach is supposed to be. And typically when people have bloating or indigestion or acid reflux, they take antacids. And that is actually the opposite of what you really need to be doing. What you need to do is figure out if this is acidic or not acidic. So on a scale of acidity, zero is water. Okay, that's neutral. The lower on the scale the more acidic, the higher, the more basic it is. 
And so technically your stomach should be like a one or two. That's, that's almost as acidic as it gets. Uh, when you take an antacid, it actually makes it more basic and that makes all these issues worse. Heartburn, indigestion, acid reflux, all those things get worse when the more uh, alkaline your stomach becomes. And so the, one of the best things you can ever do is to increase the acidity of your stomach. And one of the things that I do every single morning is take apple cider vinegar. I do a very specific drink, um, a tablespoon or two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, uh, a little bit of lemon water and sometimes we'll put cayenne pepper in it uh, or a little bit of stevia if I want to make it a little bit sweeter but basically that's going to help to increase the acidity and I'll do that on an empty stomach or right before I'll do food and that'll help to increase the acidity of the stomach if your stomach's not acidic it's not breaking down food and you're going to lead to all this bloating or indigestion a lot of gas issues are because your stomach's not acidic enough and that's not not breaking down specific things like protein if you're eating a lot of protein you're not breaking down that protein because your stomach's not acidic enough. That's where all the gas and the bloating, that's, that's where all, so much of that stuff's going to come from. Now, once it goes through the stomach, your liver creates bile and it gets stored in the gallbladder. Your gallbladder is what secretes that bile and that bile is actually alkaline. So here is where it starts to alkalinize your system. And if you don't have enough of your bile, it's, you're going to get bloating, burping, potentially right shoulder pain. If you have gallbladder issues, you're getting referrals to the right shoulder pain. If your stool floats, that is a lack of your fats being broke down. So the gallbladder, the bile is really designed to break down and digest fats. So if you don't have a gallbladder or if you have gallbladder issues, we're going to really have to increase things called bile salts to help break down that stuff so that way you can digest and absorb those healthy fats, especially because that's where you're going to get all your like fat soluble vitamins from your A, your vitamin A, your vitamin D, your vitamin K. Uh, if you have night vision issues or if you have really dry skin, it's another warning sign that you have a lot of gallbladder type issues. And there are specific like gallbladder flushes that we can talk about. Um, I would say a really important thing when it comes to starting off getting healthy is al also to try to detox, specifically stuff like detoxing the liver. If the liver is toxic or you have like fatty liver issues and it's not fatty liver from alcohol. I mean, that can be if someone consumes tons of alcohol, you can get fatty liver from the alcohol. But actually, the number one cause of fatty liver is sugar. So non-fatty liver disease um, or non-alcoholic non fatty liver disease is actually more common than alcoholic fatty liver disease and it's from stuff like fructose and you have to be careful with this so if your kids drink juice that's just super high in fructose and you can actually be causing damage to the liver and then you're going to have issues with digesting foods because it's just bogged down so cleansing the liver is really important so doing a detox system or doing a specific liver detox, or even just doing specific foods that help detox the liver, um, like beet juice can be really helpful to make sure that the, all this stuff functions properly. So if that's producing enough bile, then the next part is gonna be your pancreas. The pancreas is where your enzymes are produced, and the enzymes are what help to break down the rest of the food. If you if you actually have a, a if you do gut testing and you have um, like live DNA, like unbroken down food in the stool, it's typically gonna be a pancreas issue and the number one cause of damaging that is sugar and we have consumed so much sugar in our culture so you got to be really careful eating too much sugar is going to damage your pancreas wear it down you're not going to be able to produce enzymes and that's going to lead to potentially abdominal pain so if you have pain in this um sorry this left quadrant right below your rib cage, if you have pain and you have stuff like bloating or you have stuff like sticky stools, that's going to be a pancreas issue. And so we got to make sure we're increasing specific enzymes to help with that. So increasing the acidic of the stomach, making sure you're doing good bile salts, making sure you have proper enzymes for your pancreas, all those things are critical to support this digestive system. And then you get into this, the intestine tract. So you have good and bad bacteria, and it's specifically a, a, a balancing act that we have to have. But if you have uh, intestinal issues, then you're going to have stuff like constipation, yeast issues, bad bacteria or fungi issues. So we're going to kind of, again, identify symptoms, potentially where they're coming from in the digestive tract and what we need to do to make sure we're healing that area of the, the digestive system. So three key responsibilities for your GI system is digestion, absorption and elimination. So uh, digestion is breaking the food down. And that's, again, according to what we just went through, making sure you have proper acidity, proper bile salts, and make sure you have proper enzyme production from your pancreas. That's the breakdown of the food. 
what food you consume is important as well because if you're eating a lot of dead food then you're not able to break down that food very well and that'll cause and wreak a lot of havoc so if you're consuming tons of processed food that's that's a major issue absorption is once that food is broken down you're absorbing those macronutrients breaking those down into um, minerals and vitamins and you're absorbing that and then you then your body's turning that absorbed food into cell tissue eyeball cells skin cells muscle cells literally everything all cells of your body are created not just by what you eat but what you're able to break down and absorb and then the elimination is obviously getting rid of the waste products and the toxins nutrients equals function this is important when it comes to understanding the overall theme here i'm going to switch this the overall theme of your digestive tract versus your body function your nerve system your brain and spinal cord the power is what runs function and ultimately that's what health is health is not defined by what you eat what you look like how fast you can run a mile so it's not fitness or anything like that or, or really it's not about how you feel health is defined about how your body functions if your digestive system functions at 100 percent healthy if your lungs function at 100 percent you don't have asthma if your blood sugar regulates at 100 percent you don't have diabetes if your blood pressure regulates at 100 percent you don't have hypertension if your heart functions at 100 percent you don't have heart disease so health is about how your body functions and what controls function is your nerve system your innate intelligence through your nerve system but the nutrients are what going to support that function and if you have bad nutrients consuming or bad nutrient absorption, you're going to lead to damage and dysfunction. So it's a symbiotic relationship where one really supports the other. Okay. Gut health in your immune system. Over 70% of your immune system is housed in your gut. This is kind of an interesting concept here recently in the last couple of years, but the long COVID has been... Um, a major issue over the last couple of years, people are starting to recognize that COVID wasn't just a one acute instance, but it's occurring long term. And I would say that 80 to 90 percent of long COVID issues are caused by a weak immune system from a damaged gut. If you have a healthy gut, you don't get long COVID. So understanding really how critical your immune system is, your digestive system is to your immune system, especially when you're like your kids are always snotty, constantly getting sick or getting colds. If you feel like you catch everything, then this is going to be something critical to, to start boosting your immune system. The gut brain connection, 90% of serotonin is produced in the gut. Not just serotonin, but all neurotransmitters are really created in your gut. This is where things like mood are created from. I would say that 85 to 90 percent of depression anxiety issues would be fixed if someone could focus on healing the gut and get adjusted that's kind of a bold statement 80 90 percent of depression patients that are on medications if they could heal the gut and get adjusted they would be able to cure heal reduce medications come off medications if they just did those things that's how that's how important this is so if you have if you have depression issues or anxiety issues or if your kid if you're recognizing anxiety or depression issues in your kid or a spouse or whatever just understand that it's coming from the gut so what you're feeding them and how they're absorbing in their nerve system is going to dictate that right there so get them to get, so start changing the nutrition like we're talking about, work on some of these specific supplements that we're talking about, alter the function of your gut, replace the microbiome, and make sure they're getting their neurological system corrected by getting adjusted. And it, it, it'll it'll help easily 80, 90% of people who suffer from depression and anxiety, which is crazy because you think about how dangerous some of those serotonin reuptake inhibitors are, those antidepressants. Man, if people could just do health stuff instead of drug stuff, it would be so much better. The number one side effect for antidepressants, antidepressants are things like depression or suicidal thoughts and tendencies or homicidal actions. Antidepressants are crazy dangerous, but so many people just take them because that's what their doctor told them to do. Their doctor never told them, hey, this is why you're chemically imbalanced. This is why you're having these symptoms. This is what you can do to heal. They don't do that. That's not their job. The medical doctors will never tell you how to do that, but we will.
healthcare doctors, chiropractors, max living doctors, we're going to walk you through exactly what to do to heal so your body doesn't have those symptoms because healthy people do not suffer from depression and anxiety. GI warning signs. Bloating. Okay, so the list of digestive symptoms are crazy because of so many things that are related to your digestive system. But the simple stuff is not just like, oh, my tummy hurts or, oh, I have bloating or, oh, I have diarrhea or, oh, I eat this and then my, you know, I get cramping or whatever. Everything from skin issues to mood issues to chronic inflammation, pain in your joints, literally like the back pain you constantly have, the knee pain you constantly have, the elbow pain, the wrist pain, all that can be caused from inflammatory responses because your GI tract is just wrecked. So it's not just stomach issues. What goes in must come out. It is insane when I have conversations when people recognize that they or don't recognize how constipated they are. So just as a rule of thumb, when you eat, as many times as you eat a day is as many times as you need to go to the bathroom. So think of it like a train station. <laughs> one train comes in, one train must go out. You can't just have all these trains coming in because then, then it's going to be crazy packed. Like there's going to be no, 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 no room for trains. So one food comes in and you have a, 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 G, a, a, a GI colic reflex here. So when you eat, it should stimulate your stomach to stimulate your colon to evacuate. So that way you make room. In fact, so we have brand new babies and this is kind of interesting to see, but when they eat, they poop. When they eat, they poop. When they eat, they poop. So when you eat as many times as you eat, so if you eat three meals a day, you should poop three times a day. If you're intermittent fasting and you're eating once a day, you should poop once a day. Frequency, consistency, and color. I, I get that it's weird, but you need to be checking your poop on a regular basis. You, you got to look. You got to see what's going on in there. If you're not checking, you're oblivious to potentially some really dangerous things. So you got to recognize not only how often you're going, the consistency, and obviously the color. So there's seven different types. Um, the type one is going to be your, your like hard lumps or like nut, uh, like nuts. It's like, like, <laughs> it's like rabbit turds or deer turds. You're just little turds. Um, so it, it, a lot of this is going to be a lack of hydration and a lack of, um, uh, 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 basically hydration. What else is there? Reading notes, I'm cheating. I was going to say fiber, but fiber is going to be like types seven, six, and five. So uh, then, and then and to type two, uh, lumpy sausage like. This is a better consistency. It's not necessarily perfect. Uh, type three sausage with some cracks or a, a smooth, soft uh, sausage or snake. Type four. Those are really the ones that you want it to look like. If it starts to get soft blobs, clear cut edges, not clear cut edges. Um, it floats. That's a digestive issue. Typically it's going to be, you're not breaking food down very well, especially if you get mushy consistency, uh, or you can see food in there, or if it's real liquid or watery type seven. So a lot of inflammation going on in these last couple types. Okay. And so recognizing there's, there's inflammatory responses going on. And then the coloring, the different colors, really determine too if there's potential issues. So green stools could be due to eating high context of green food, but it also could be a sign of bowel disorders or food poisoning. White is not normal and could be caused by a lack of bile. So if you have gallbladder issues, that could be a warning sign that you have white stools. Brown, normal, black or tarry could it could be because you're taking like supplements or activated charcoal. So if you're taking like the detox system and you start to get a little bit more black or tarry stool, uh, just know that it's it's just part of like the supplementation pulling toxins out um, or it could be an issue of upper GI tract bleeding if it's red or bright you could have you could be eating red foods but it could be a lower GI issues or fissures or ulcers in your colon or um, lower GI even um, yellow stools can be caused by certain yellow foods it can also be a sign of GERD or infection uh, or you could have an infant and their poop is just yellow. <laughs>
frequency, again, you got to make sure you're going on a regular basis and pay attention. If you're not recognizing how often you're pooping, then you, you got to become aware of that. GI issues or other warning signs, bloating, abdominal pain, constipation, nausea, diarrhea, infrequent bowel movements. Um, so bloating can be a SIBO or a low stomach acid issue. Those are probably the, the places where I'd start. Uh, if you're not breaking protein down very well, it's a, it, it, it's, it's a low stomach acid issues, so especially seeing like acid reflux, low stomach. So acid reflux, heartburn, indigestion, those are all low stomach acid, um, abdominal pain, cramping, constipation. That's a lower GI issue. Diarrhea, inflammatory responses, inflammation of the stomach lining, or even leaky gut issues. Dysbiosis. Everyone say that dysbiosis. This is a dysfunction or imbalance in your good and bad gut bacteria. So understanding that you are more bacterial cells than you are human cells is kind of crazy. You have around 100 billion human DNA cells. You have like 500 billion bacterial cells, fung fungal cells, and viral cells. And as long as you are healthy and there's a good environment, these bacterial, viral, and fungal cells actually help create health. They help to break down food. They help to detox. They help to defend you against other viruses or bacteria, part of your immune system. And so they're helpful. If you have a bad environment, if your body is sick because you're not taking good care of it, you're eating bad foods, you're stressed out, you're not getting enough exercise, if you're not getting adjusted, you're creating a bad environment, then bad cell, like bad bacteria, bad viruses, bad fungal activity will cause damage and cause disease. So it's really the ratio of good to bad, which is an imbalance would be dysbiosis. So SIBO is a small intestine bacterial overgrowth. So when you have a bad environment, you'll get a bad bacterial, bacterial overgrowth. So warning signs are watery stools, um, audible digestive sounds, flatulence, so passing gas, um, intolerances, specifically stuff like milk, um, poor response to symptomatic therapy. So if you're trying to do stuff like probiotics and increasing fiber or water, and if it's not working, that's a SIBO issue. In fact, a really good sign that you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth if you take a probiotic and you get you feel worse. That's a big time warning sign that you have a, a um, SIBO. Um, now, IBS, abdominal distress, bloating, chronic diarrhea, constipation, um, especially if there's not other bacterial like fungal infections, then you know it's going to be IBS issues. More than 50% of IBS patients, so if you have inflammatory bowel issues, have SIBO. So that's really important to understand. This is an issue when it comes to leading to autoimmunity issues. But there's a difference between IBS and IBD. So IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, versus irritable bowel disease. That's going to be more things like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. That's where the, ir the irritation turns into a disease process and you get some really serious stuff going on. Um, that's where you're going to have ulcers. You're going to have some serious, even potential like bleeding. It's going to turn into leaky gut, which is going to turn into autoimmune diseases. So understanding like if you have this stuff, you could have some serious imbalance. And then leaky gut, once you have enough stress to your system and leaky gut is going to be enough trauma to your digestive system that's going to shred the uh alveoli here i'm going to pull up a i'm going to pull up a image i want you to see
let's see, how do I, how do, I do this? Okay, I'm going to share this, attempt to share this. Here we go. So hopefully you guys can see this. Oh, not yet. Here we go. So when you're looking at this, so what can cause stress to the, the so this, this right here, where you see these fingers going off, um, these are your mucosal membrane cells. There's your cell lining is one cell layer thick. When you have really tight junctions, your stomach is really healthy. What will happen though is when you get exposed to toxins, microorganisms, gluten, medications, there's all sorts of different things. It's like antibiotics. These things can stress the mucosal lining and can cause separation in these cells. And then all of a sudden you get these little particles that will leach through that cell layer and it'll go into the bloodstream. Once it's in the bloodstream, you're going to get immune responses. So you'll start, you'll start off with malabsorption and you get autoimmune issues, food intolerances. You'll get, it actually goes through the blood brain barrier into systemic inflammation where massive disease occurs. So when you are consuming terrible foods, inflammatory foods, bad oils, sugars, glutens, you're consuming medications or exposed to environmental toxins, you're going to cause damage to this cell layer and the mucosal lining. Basically, that mucosal lining gets swiped away. So it's all a, a hitting the cells. It's all hitting the cells. And then it causes that separation in your leaky gut. Okay. And that's where you're going to get these autoimmune diseases from. So even like food intolerances, like, so when you are, when you don't have, when you don't have enough of these pancreatic enzymes, because you have stress and trauma to the, from sugar and stuff like that, you're not breaking down food. And a lot of times that's, what's going to lead to like, uh, food sensitivities and, um, allergic reactions to food because of that. And because of the leaky gut. So consistent inflammatory responses. So remember when you have this chronic like leaky gut or these inflammatory responses from just damaging your digestive system, it's going to cause other areas of pain. So things like rheumatoid arthritis, systemic inflammatory responses, joint pain, even like chronic low back pain or neck pain be, can be caused by these inflammatory responses. So understanding that, that you're, you're damaging the gut and that there's there, there's issues going on that we have to address because once you can heal some of this stuff and reduce the systemic inflammation, you're going to even reduce the pain that you're feeling. So people come in who have like really bad symptoms, like bad neck pain, bad back pain, and we're getting them adjusted, but like it's just not healing. It doesn't seem like it's, it's like feeling better for very long. It's because there's so much chronic inflammation. We can adjust you all day long, correct your spine even, but if there's damage from what you're doing consistency lifestyle-wise – you're going to always have pain, even like if you have real bad knee pain, elbow pain, wrist pain, you know, so much of that can be fixed if you just heal the gut and restore the, uh, um, the reduce the inflammatory responses. So how do we reset the gut? So let's get into the solutions. And we're talking about the five essentials because every single health category under the sun is in these five essentials. So as we apply these five essentials, our body can start to heal. And so we're going to talk about that when it comes to like healing the gut specifically. Number one is you are what you eat. So whole foods. So start shifting away from these processed foods. The more whole foods you can eat, the better. In fact, so much of like the good microbiome, the good bacteria, the food source for the good bacteria is fiber from live fruits and vegetables. So like raw fruits and vegetables. Now, sugar feeds the bad bacteria. So if you're eating processed foods, processed carbohydrates, more than you're eating quality, healthy, raw food, you're obviously, you're going to be getting an imbalance in the bad bacteria versus the good bacteria. So here are the top five gut healing foods. Number one is healthy fats, things like avocados. Okay. So low, um, 
when you consume low fat diets that were kind of made popular back in the day, they took all the healthy fats out and they filled it full of sugar. Once that happened, that's when you saw an explosion of things like heart disease, cancers, diabetes. You saw tons of inflammatory responses. This is also where you see massive amounts of increased body fat. I mean, if you look at pictures from back in the day of the, you know, the 1950s and 1960s, even into the 1970s, you don't see a ton of people that have obesity issues. But now, you know, 33% are obese, 66% are overweight. So much of it is because fat got such a bad rap. Fat is critical for not only healthy brain function, but it's critical for anti-inflammatory responses. But every single cell layer in your entire body is made up of fat. So if you're not consuming enough healthy fat, you're actually damaging every single cell in your entire body. Yep. So here's a study that also showed that specifically things like omega-3 fatty acids help to improve the good gut bacteria. Probiotic rich foods. Now, I'm a fan of probiotic supplementation, but ultimately, even some of the best probiotics are relatively limited. The best way to get good bacteria is through um, fermented foods. So consuming probiotic rich foods like kimchi, sauerkraut, kefir are great ways to boost gut health. This, these foods actually contain good bacteria that can help improve gut microbiota, so your microbiome. So this is so when I was going through a lot of my gut stuff, when I found out that I did all the testing, I had really bad imbalances and digestive disorders and leaky gut issues. I would do sauerkrauts before meals to help increase the gut um, bacteria to help break down food. So it helped with actual digesting of foods. One of my all time favorites is bone broth. In fact, um, I do bone broth smoothies. So we have three different kinds of protein. We have the um, whey protein, we have, which is really good as well. And I, I think it tastes really well, but we also have a bone broth protein. Um, I don't think it tastes quite as good as the whey protein, but it's significantly healthier for you. And we have some of the cleanest, best kinds of bone broth protein. Um, it specifically um, helps with increasing the mucosal lining. So that way there's a barrier between food and your cells to help ensure you're not causing damage. One of the best ways that you can heal the gut is even just doing like a bone broth cleanse or a bone broth fast. So you fast and all you do is consume bone broth to help heal the gut. But this is a great way to do it as you consume bone broth smoothies. Okay. Antioxidant rich, antioxidant rich berries. Guys, I don't know about you, but sometimes I'll catch myself just not consuming near enough fruits and vegetables. And I don't know. Uh, um, I didn't necessarily grow up eating tons of fruits and vegetables. I don't know. I, I, standard American diet was real, real high in my family. We loved, we loved steak. We loved hamburgers. We loved pasta. I just don't remember consuming tons and tons of fruits and vegetables, but it's really, really important that you are consuming a significant amount of these raw foods because this fiber is what's going to help feed the good bacteria. This is what they need to survive. If you're not consuming, you're starving the good bacteria. And if you're not consuming this stuff, I'm guessing you're consuming other stuff like that stuff, which is feeding the bad bacteria. So berries are among some of the healthiest foods. Berries are loaded with antioxidants and also large amounts of fiber, which is crucial, crucial and optimal for gut health. Fiber helps to support regular bowel movements, uh, helps move stools through the body, and turns the supporting. Uh, it helps to support overall gut health. Ginger. I hate the taste of ginger, but it is critical. In fact, the more and more you learn about ginger, the more you kind of recognize it's like a superfood. Um, but it, it really does, really helps with soothing of the gut. Uh, ginger contains gingerol, which is a powerful anti-inflammatory property. So really, really powerful anti-inflammatory, especially if you have systemic inflammatory responses from leaky gut issues. Uh, or if you have stuff like rheumatoid arthritis or IBS, ginger helps has been helped to shown uh, to improve digestive, resulting in less nausea and bloating. So if you do a lot of not, if you have a lot of nausea or bloating issues, ginger is going to be something specifically you need to start adding to your nutrition plan. Um, 
You've been throwing it into smoothies. Ooh, that's a good idea. You can hide like anything in a smoothie. In fact, um, so I'll do like um, uh, wheatgrass shots, but the wheatgrass has ginger in it. It's really, it's pretty strong. It it, it burns a little bit, but uh, I mean, you can do you can do any shot. I mean, just boom, hit it, and then you get that stuff in there. It really helps to help heal and soothe the gut. Okay, so those are the top five. Like, I would say, you know, I'll just re review them real quick. So, top five healing foods: healthy fats, specific stuff like avocados, uh, coconut oils, avocado oils, extra virgin olive oils, raw butter or raw milk. I'm, again, I'm not a huge dairy fan, but if you're going to do dairy, like raw uh, milk or kefir, um, we do, we get uh, cream from a dairy farm, which is non-processed at all. Uh, probiotic rich foods, your sauerkraut, kimchi, uh, bone broth. And again, it has to be a clean source of bone broth, antioxidant rich berries, ginger. Those are the top five. So three R's to gut healing. Remove. You cannot heal the gut if you are not eliminating the stress. You can do all the supplements. You can do all the addition of foods. But if you're not removing the damage, you're constantly going to be causing issues. So if you're constantly consuming processed foods, constantly con you know, taking antibiotics, if you're constantly taking medications, if you're constantly eating sugar, you're just causing more and more damage. And so you have to find and eliminate the underlying stresses. So, so also when we say remove, not just remove the stressors, but as you eliminate the stressors, like the sugars, that's what's going to help remove the bad bacteria. So removing refers to the harmful critters that have taken over. During the removal portion of gut health, this is referring primarily to removing bad bacteria, yeast, and parasites. So even doing like a parasite cleanse. Uh, an individual may have signs of this if it could, uh, or it could be discovered in a GI effects test. So if you do testing, you can see if you have an imbalance in this or high yeast or parasite or bacterial growths. Another big one is going to be non steroidal anti-inflammatories. If you're consuming stuff like ibuprofen, Tylenol, um, Motrin on a regular basis, you're, you're really causing some huge damage to your digestive system. One of the best things to consume to help to remove the bad critters is the, uh, something called lysine. It's in the Max GI. The Max GI has some specific stuff in it that basically breaks down the bacterial walls of the bad bacteria, the bad critters. And once that cell wall gets damaged and it breaks it down, then it dies and then it can safely be removed from your system. So breaking down the bad bacteria, specifically consuming Max GI is, is actually one of my absolute favorite supplements when it comes to this. Okay, so repair. Repairing refers to repairing and healing the epithelial cells of the gut. That's the mucosal lining. Creating a tighter junction in the mucosal lining so that things aren't causing leaky gut. Again, if I can pull up this other picture. So you can see. So right there, again, repairing the leaky gut. So going back over. Coming back over here to create a tighter juncture so you're not getting this leaky gut. Okay, so repairing the mucosal lining. So specifically, increasing your digestive enzymes and bile salts. So the best supplement for this, in my opinion, is the GI Renew. It has some really important things in there to help rehydrate the mucosal lining and to create a tighter junction and reduce the inflammatory responses. Another, another really important part to this is to make sure you're getting adjusted. If you have areas of interference, subluxation, or damage in your spine that is affecting the cells in your gut, you're, you're, you, you can't heal. So, I mean, I can't tell you how many stories I have of patients who have come in and even before they've gotten to the di like doing the digestive protocols and taking the right supplements, they're just getting adjusted and they see their inflammatory responses heal. In fact, I had, I had a kid come in and he was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis to a point where he was prescribed chemo medication from his doctor. I mean, this was so bad. He was bleeding from his colon. He couldn't, I mean, he was going to the bathroom 
all the time. He had it was so bad that he had to be taken out of public school and he had to be homeschooled because he just was going to the bathroom nonstop all the time, bleeding from his colon. The doctors had diagnosed him with this chronic like this ulcerative colitis, which is an incurable autoimmune disease. And he came into the office and we found some really severe curvatures in his lower back where the nerves were being damaged going to his colon. And we started getting him adjusted. And after like four months, his digestive system had completely healed and no more medications. He went back to school. Uh, kind of a crazy story, but he had this awesome football career after he got back into school. It was just an amazing testimony. But again, the, your nerve supply is critical to make sure that your body is healing and repairing properly. And then re-inoculate. So you remove, you get back, get rid of the bad critters, then you start to reheal the gut. So heal the tightening, tightening of the juncture. So you're healing the cells, you're healing the mucosal lining, and then you have to re-inoculate. And what that means is we got to put back in the good bacteria. So you have to repopulate your digestive tract with good bacteria. So the re-inoculation phase is important because the good bacteria, so you can break down the foods and increase your immune system. So this is where taking really good probiotics and increasing your fermented food is going to be important. So here's the gut bundle that I really, really recommend if you have digestive issues, systemic inflammatory responses, or it's just like the simple stuff. Like if you know you have a lot of bloating, or if you know you have a lot of gas, or you're belching a lot, or you have heartburn, indigestion, or if you have skin issues, I mean, all of these things are related to your gut health. You got to make sure that you're healing the gut. And so this is the specific protocol hand picked to make sure your body is able to heal and break down food, absorb food. So you can even, you know, build healthy cells, tissues, and organs. So the max GI specifically, because it has something in it that helps to break down and kill the bad bacteria, your digestive enzymes, which is going to help break down the food. So you're able to absorb them better. The gut renew, and there's a pill as well as a powder, and that's going to help heal the gut and seal the gut lining. So if you have leaky gut issues, that's what you need to be taking. And then the re-inoculate is going to be increasing your probiotics. And we have a couple of different versions of probiotics that I really like. We also have a, a spore-based probiotic that is available as well. Exercise is kind of important, specifically when it comes to gut health. Most people don't recognize this. And part of it is because it helps you sweat and remove toxins. And toxins are a part of, again, what's causing damage to the gut lining. Really identifying and removing other sources of toxins. Guys, we've done really in-depth seminars when it comes to identifying and removing areas of toxins. Really, it starts with, um, it starts with cleaners. So what are you what are you exposed to in your house? So what kind of cleaners are you using? Um, the brands that we use in our house, specifically when it just comes to like cleaning the house, are essential oils. So we use essential oils to clean our house, or vinegar and water is really good as well. So um, again, you want to look for non toxic ingredients. Uh, uh, an app that you can use is something called Think Dirty. See where I have it. And then you have uh, another one, uh, environmental. So here is, this is another app. If you put in your cleaning product, if I make this bigger, this is an app that you can use to identify how toxic your cleaning product is or food. Um, my nanny uh, was using a certain kind of perfume and she thought it was really organic and healthy and i looked it up and it was really toxic and it was really bad for endocrine disruptors and the reason i was i was i wanted to know how clean or how bad it was because i could smell her and we have these brand new babies and i didn't want my brand new babies breathing something that was going to cause a damage to their endocrine system so again it's a great tool to use processed foods cosmetics um so when it comes to that way, so I'm going to back up to like the cleaners part. So if you're going to do laundry, we do Charlie's soap, which is actually available at Max Mama's. Uh, if you want to go in there and get some really healthy soap, uh, hand or dish soap, we use something called seventh generation. It's fairly good. There's some better stuff out there. It's just currently what we have at our house. When it comes to makeup or cosmetics, I don't use any, unfortunately. Sorry, guys, but I don't use any. But uh, I asked my wife and what she uses and what she really recommends to her patients is what's called 100% pure. That's the brand, 100% pure. 
So you got to be careful with stuff like cosmetics because, you know, you shouldn't put anything on your skin that you wouldn't put in your mouth. When it comes to lotion, we'll use stuff like coconut oil with some essential oils um, or shea butter. So we kind of make our own. Um, toothpaste, we use like charcoal toothpaste, which again, it's available at Max Mamas. You just got to make sure you're identifying some of these major sources of toxins because you can't avoid some stuff. Like you can't avoid a lot of environmental toxins. Like when you, like you have carpet in your house or you have vinyl flooring or wood flooring or you have paint on your wall, like you can't avoid a lot of the environmental toxins you're exposed to, but what you can avoid is the cleaners you use, the foods you eat and the cosmetics that you put on your skin. And then obviously smoking, that's, those things are just really, really bad and hard on your digestive system. They wreak, wreak havoc. Check your, home, you check your home for mold. That's another major issue. And you want to make sure you're doing really clean water. Uh, we use reverse osmosis with remineralization. Stress, guys, man, stress is just such a killer. you got to really identify major sources of stresses by eliminating those. Um, it really does. And we call it peace management. And I would say the number one tool to help with overcoming stress is your war plan. When you plan out your week and you create priority, priority so you can kind of see like all the priority lists. When you plan out your week and you know exactly the most important tasks you need to accomplish and you're real organized, it really does help to eliminate stress. When you're doing memory management or you're trying to fit too much stuff in or if you're not planning downtime, you're not planning – like if you're not planning work time versus planning family time, that's a major stressor because you see one start to take away from the other. If you're constantly stressed out about work, it's stealing from family time. And then when, you don't, and when, then when you're not neglecting your family and there's family issues, it affects your work time. So really planning your week out, planning your day out, understanding if you accomplish some of the main tasks you have to do, a lot of times the little tasks will take care of themselves. So priority lists are huge. Planning that downtime. And then obviously, you know, structure equals function, guys. Your nerve system controls every single response and neurological uh, function your entire body. So when it comes to even stress, you know, in our office, what I tell my patients is it's not really trying to remove all the stressors. It's making sure your body can adapt to stress. That's ultimately the healthy, the best health solution. Yes, you want to be good at stress management and peace management and planning in your day and, and doing all the stuff I talked about. But ultimately, we want to be so healthy that we can handle the stress. You know, some people get stressed out, they get headaches, they get stressed out, they build ulcers, they get stressed out, they build cancer. Someone else gets stressed out and that doesn't happen. Well, if you have a healthy gut, you can handle more stress. If you have a healthy nervous system, if you're getting adjusted, your body can adapt to stress. It can regulate stress hormones significantly better than if you have a damaged gut. If you have a leaky gut, if you have systemic, systemic inflammatory responses, or if your nervous system is a wreck and you're not getting adjusted, you just can't handle those stressors. And that subluxation, the damage your nervous system is really going to create a lot of that. If you've never been checked or if your family hasn't been checked, you know, changing your nutrition plan is awesome. Getting on the supplement bundle is critical. But it, none of that matters if you have a bunch of damage in your nerve system. Your body just can't even utilize that stuff. It's not just the digestion. It's the absorption. It's the utilization. Your nerve system is what controls every cell function in your entire body. All right, guys. Make sure you guys are getting plugged into the upcoming events. Make sure you're plugged into the uh, our, our Facebook or social media where we put out a ton of content. Um, and then make sure you're looking out for what our next seminar or webinar is going to be. Uh, if you guys have, if you guys know someone that needs to hear this information, please forward this content, this information for them. Uh, if you have questions or if you want to talk specific about other practical things you could do, nutrition plans, um, additional digestive uh, uh, supplements, or making sure you're getting on the right bundle, make sure you talk to me or ask the, the team uh, for, for the information on what to do moving forward, what your next step is. But again, if you know someone who needs to get into the office, to start working on their nerve system, start getting plugged into Max Living and the Five Essentials. Uh, make sure you send them this information, send them information about the office so that we can reach out and help them. Because health is not um, a destination, it's a journey. In fact, we call it an infinity game. You're always going to be wanting to grow, to learn more, to protect your health and to move forward with health because you don't want to get to a point where like, you're so sick that it's a crisis. You get diagnosed with the disease processes. It's almost too late sometimes when that occurs. It's it's significantly easier to always be working on your health, to be implementing practical things to take care of yourself, to move your health forward as you age, um, especially when it comes to developing healthy kids. The more you practice healthy lifestyle traits, the more your kids are going to do it as well. 
you know, too often people blame genetics on, on health. You know, someone's overweight, they blame their genetics or they get disease processes, they blame their genetics. And really only 3% of disease is genetic, 97% is lifestyle. So what runs more in your family than genes does is lifestyle. So if you're eating a certain way, your kids are going to eat a certain way. And it's worse for your kids than it is for you. If you're eating crappy you're, and your kids are eating crappy, it's significantly harder on your kids. They're going to be set up for, for a way worse outcome than you are. Okay, so start to implement these five essentials, not just so you feel better, so you have a healthier weight, so you are avoiding medications and sickness disease, but do it so it influences your children so that they can grow up not part of the current statistics that we see nowadays, but it's one out of five have a learning disability, one out of four have uh, uh, allergies, asthma, chronic medications that are they going to take for the rest of their life. One out of three will be diabetic by the age of, you know, 15, 30, whatever. I mean, so guys, you look at some of the disease processes that are occurring, even like the increased risk of heart disease and cancer, cancer is supposed to increase another 75% by 2030. Like these are the kind of things that we can avoid if we just raise our kids up in this max living model. So again, learning how to implement these health strategies by getting plugged in all the workshops and webinars and everything we see going on in the office. So, all right, guys, uh, make sure you ask questions. And I hope that you take uh, this information and start to apply it to help heal the gut and your overall health and vitality. Talk to you later.